Kristring, and I'm here to talk about uh, Swedshock. It's a node-based system for designing parametric objects. And I will start by showing a short movie. The first part is made by me, and the second part is cut by Nikitron, that's the main de developer behind the project. And I would like to stress here that we are not animators, we are architects. This is just for playing around with the parameters a bit. And after seeing all the nice videos everybody has been showing, it's a bit um, shameful to show off this. Some of the pictures are very nice and some of the things are not so nice, but it's all about potential and not actually what we have done yet so much. These are the few manufactured objects, like a table, a uh, bar disk, and uh, this 3D printed thing. So, I, my name is Lin Sing. I'm a Swedish architect. I'm a not a developer. Uh, and if you would look at this red shock, uh, source code. I think it will, after a while, become sadly clear that it's not a professional quality Python add-on, but it's a working add-on and it, uh, it can do some very nice things. I started in uh, early 2014. Uh, I did these two nodes that you can see down to the left first. A simple thing to get uh, a series of uh, uh, floating values and I added the seed setting to the random to make it actually useful in the design context because before it was continuously updating. And uh, so I started the whole thing by scratching an itch and I just, con just continued and it became a hobby of mine. And I have to say I'm not using this as any professional capacity, I haven't done anything professional with it. But some other people have been doing things and I will show some things. The development team is listed here. Alexander and Nikita started the whole thing. Agustin joined them and made some nodes, and I joined them and I took over the, like some core parts and I continued developing. Uh, Sefi Dialga Macardel has been doing a lot of interesting work, and Konstantin Vorobiev has done some very nice Blender integration in certain parts. So it's a node-based system to create geometry. It, we manipulate mesh geometry, we don't really work with curves. Uh, you can manipulate geometry by creating vector mathematics, simple mathematics, and you can form this relationship between the vectors and vertices. You can create mesh geometry. Uh, SearchLock is an optimistic project and it's continuous growing. Right now, the add-on uh, download size is 800 kilobit, the zip file from GitHub. It's an incredibly large add-on for being uh, in Blender, I think. And, uh, but it's also because it's a very, uh, mo by default, it's a very modular system. Every node is a module, and uh, all the no modules are basically independent but can re be reused in different ways. It's a visual programming language. Uh, the node group is evaluated as a directed isocyclic graph, like all the Blender node groups are by default, which limits what people want to do. For example, you cannot do recursion, iteration, and certain things. Where I have some work doing with abstractions for these things, but I haven't done anything with it, really. So why are architects interested in parametric design? Uh, this this uh, is some excerpts from the Parametric Manifesto by Patrick Schumacher, uh, who is uh, one of the main characters at Saha Hadid Architects. You might uh, agree or disagree with what he says. Uh, I personally dislike him and lots of the work they do, but I think it's very interesting, the relationship between the computer and the tool and how you create things. Because what we can do is very deeply affected by how we do it. And the tools available to control what we can do and what we can realize. 
So if you look at this example, you can basically see the mesh grids being uh, in, in built into the real building. It's very easy to see like NARD flow and other things realized in a physical form. There's a very direct relationship between the software and what it does and the aesthetics in the building in this case. So, parametric designs in the Sverdshock, and this is by Delga Macardo, Sefi. He's thinking in terms of causes. Symptoms resolve automatically. If you think it, it can be done simpler, it probably can start. And uh, I heard a lot here from people today and the previous days that they had looked at the add on, but very few people have felt like how to get started. And there's a serious problem with uh, this system. And so I will give. So the workflows of this is that you have to realize it's a tool set. It's not a complete solution. There's no completeness in it. It's just you have to build everything by yourself. We give you some tools. And you can choose to use this as something simple. Just you want to place some geometry in a very specific mathematic way. You can do that. And you can use that later as a mesh. Uh, you can do something powerful and create a complete building. It's extensible in different way, and the basic concept is you position mesh data and organize meshes. Uh, there are, currently there are 128 nodes, and it's, it's written in 100% Python using the PyNodes interface. Uh, we're doing a documentation, and about 70% of the nodes are documented. You can see an example in the bottom part of the picture. Uh, the Blender artist thread has reached 80 pages and 120,000 100, almost 130,000 views as of today. So it has generated an enormous interest, and that's also why I'm here talking about it. So what can you do with this? You can play with geometry. Uh, this is a fish example by Delga Macardo. I choose it because uh, Frank Gehry once said, uh, a fish is architecture, but a cow is not. Uh, another simple example is you can uh, manipulate the vertex weights of a mesh, which can be very useful in this very simple example. We use the dot product that we remap to a different range based on the vertex normal in the, from this mesh. And many techniques that you can do with Sverdrock, you can do with different add-ons or different things. But this is a generic tool set that you can do many such things with and you can continue doing this. Uh, you can use it for very simple things like this in many, many different ways. Uh, we have an extensible scripting system. We have two different script nodes where you can input your own uh, simple uh, code to generate things. In this case, there's extremely simple generating a grid. I won't go through the code, it's very simple. Uh, for anybody that knows Python, and if you don't, you don't have to deal with these things, but it's to show that if you want to do your own node, or you want to generate your own geometry, you can very simply input this and parameterize it, and you get the results. For example, this is a very simple flower petal done with sinus curves, and it's not hard to uh, like model this in other ways. This is a very simple demonstration of uh, how to create variation. And everything in Sverdrock is a list. So if you input a list of the numbers into the uh, number of petals here, uh, you get a series of different flowers and you can put shows to position them using, uh, in this case, a, we use a plane as a generator to generate a series of points to distribute the flowers in space. Or you can do something extremely advanced as Philip Gimio, uh, Dormon Architecture, Tumblr.com did. Uh, this is a setup of 350 nodes. It, and here I can say that this, this clearly highlights some problem of the current approach. We don't have node groups, we lack many abstractions. There's a lot of unneeded uh, repetition here. Uh, but many of the, we have different techniques and ways now to like simplify this. My intention was to show how simple this layout could look compared to this, but I'd, 
uh, haven't had time to disassemble it and reassemble it in a good way this weekend. I've been too busy drinking beer. So I want to show some simple files. So you can simply animate this fish in a very, very basic way. And it's not a useful animation, perhaps in the sense that you can manipulate it in a good way. As we said, we're not animators. But you can very simply parameterize and show the parameters. Now, I won't really go through this example right now because it takes some time and it's not really perhaps worth effort. I will do a very simple basic demo a little bit later. But just to show, this, this is a simple amount of nodes basically for doing a very simple thing. And you get something like this. And this is the complex example, the building shown before. It's a totally parametric uh, object. There's no external geometry. Everything is generated from numbers in different steps and uh, uh, solidified offset and many different operations are applied to it. And here you have the settings of the node tree that we expose in the user interface. So if, for example, this is the floor height parameter, it's now put for 3.1. Let's set it to 1.5, so we have a midget building. And it updates this very quickly. And uh, the updates are not quick enough to perhaps to drag these numbers on my computer. Perhaps this one is quicker. But every parameter that you can design here, you can uh, animate or you can do other things with it. Uh, of course, this I want to show you this node graph. It's a total craziness. I mean, uh, this is a, like an unacceptable amount of complexity, perhaps, for designing a building. If, if you look at it firstly, but it's all made in a, like it's very repetitive. The operations applied, and if we had node groups, it could be done much simpler. And I won't say that this building perhaps is like how you should design a building or anything like this, but it's a possible way to design a building or design geometry. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Use these controls. And it's a horrible, horrible mess in many ways, this model. And uh, one of the problems we have that is every change you do in a setup like this is takes a lot of time. And uh, a recent, if you have used it recently, uh, uh, well, basically until this week, there's a new version available when I solve some of these problems and I have time now to change, fix things. But there are, uh, for every change when he did this, he ever had to wait like one second for the node tree to update every time. Um, I don't know how he could do it, like this would be too annoying to me, but uh, we've resolved this now, finally. And we also exposed a series of settings in this, uh, like you can lock it from being animated, we can show to display it uh, in the OpenGL preview, or you can bake it if you want as a mesh object. So, this is a very simple object. I want to show you some basic techniques here. So, Sverdshock is based on a, that we have nodes that produce data and we have output nodes that can, you can use to visualize the data or uh, produce a functional mesh object that works with almost all modifiers. I think the skin modifier is the only one that's 
doesn't really work. Um, so in this case, we have taken four circles, lifted them, and created a cylinder. And we, by changing the parameters here of the width, the diameter of the circle, we can do whatever we want with it. And we position the circles by creating a, a list of numbers that we input into a vector. We get a series of vectors that are locations for a matrix, and we displace the vertices using a matrix operation. Uh, and from this simple one, we can then interpolate another surface that are, this is uh, using cubic interpolation. And you have the same four control curves that you can then choose what, what, you, what will happen with the object. And there you have the mesh object instead. It's a proper uh, Blender mesh object that you can then continue to work on and keep modifiable. And uh, we can construct many different types of geometry. And you can choose this won't be up anything, this won't slow anything down until you change a parameter when it re has to recalculate. Uh, of course, if you edit the mesh object and you recalculate, it will overwrite the original, uh, the, your edits, but it's unavoidable in this kind of context. And here we have a very simple, I mean, this is an extremely, in this case, simple setup. It should be even simpler, of course. Uh, we have a, a series of interpolation objects being created from the vertices that we change the direction of the lists and a lot of things. And the main concept, of course, is that everything is a list of lists of lists and uh, contains numbers. So you should be able to modify, create a number of objects in the same sequence all the time. This is uh, somewhat working sometimes and sometimes not working, depending on the age of the specific node. So what we need to do, we need a better structure. Uh, it was started as a hack, a very optimistic hack, to get things done, and we got things done. But it has grown perhaps too much for its own good, in, like in the number of code and the number. So it's beget, becoming harder to try to change it. And as, as I said earlier, we're not developers, especially not me. Uh, but I have some ideas about how it should be working, and we are very far from that. But even today, you can do very, very powerful things with it, I think. And. Uh, Standing here at the conference and looking at what all the pe other people are doing, I feel, uh, because I'm a Blender, I'm a new user of Blender, I don't know so much. Uh, so I feel that many of the things that I've shown here can be done, of course, in better and uh, like more standard ways. So we also need, we need curve objects, we need text objects, we need real, to work with real objects and similar things to do better Blender integration. Of course, even today you can already achieve this by using this scripts you plug into the system. For example, you could do a, a dancing node layout, which is kind of useless, but you can do it. Uh, another point I would like to raise is that there are now like a series of different uh, node systems that kind of could work together, but they don't. And I think that for the future, it would be very nice if you could unify these systems. Perhaps not, our system is not supposed to be the base. We're, we might even be a, like a hindrance in some ways. Uh, but I really think that there's a great potential in a node-based design where you can manipulate the parametric objects and the parameters of what you want to design and keep it flexible. Uh, so I want to point you to these two web pages, the GitHub and the Nikitron's Russian thread, where you can uh, where you can find a series of lessons in Russians that are 
actually quite usable with Google Translate if you don't speak Russian yet. And uh, there's also the Blender Artist Stress. We're always welcome to ask questions and come with uh, input or any requests or anything. We, of course, we can promise anything. Um, for more technical issues, of course, we prefer to use the GitHub issue system. And uh, everybody is welcome to participate or look at the code. Um, and we welcome any help with either design or, uh, well, any hazy, basically. Let's stop there. It's a really amazing example of the power of our Python API. Yeah. So I'm still wondering if Campbell is not here, no, the guy is calling probably. But did you meet with him? No, I haven't spoken with Campbell. Uh, he, could, he could look at it. He, he really likes this kind of system, and he can probably <laughs> advise you on some speed up, or he would, might get inspired in optimizing some parts of the API, yeah. especially the parts where you have to uh, handle lots of uh, points or mesh data, which is possible to make much faster. Yeah. Uh, any quick questions from the audience? We have a few minutes. Well, we have a lot of time, because there will be a half-hour break. So, anyone has a question for about this add-on? You are an architect. Uh, can I... Uh, well, I'm answering my own question. I can, uh, I can make my own Python node, right? Yes, of course. Uh, can I, is, it all, is there also a script node that I don't have to make it in? Yes. And everything is animatable. <laughs> three three yes. questions, sorry. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so we have these script nodes here. We can load. Uh, let's take an. It's for a very advanced example, in a way. We, we could have done a pie node workshop. Or, yeah. uh, we should do more workshops anyway in the Blender conference. Because it's little Python scripts, little pieces of code, and they convert to nodes. And then you have a visual programming language for your pleasure. So everybody can make little scripts, convert it to a node, and then you start noodling around. That's how it works. Mind blown! <laughs> So uh, Lawrence right. the tractor, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm very impressed. Uh, I wasn't here since the beginning. Uh, yeah. Where can I get this? Uh, you can get it at uh, the GitHub address, or you can get it uh, at the GitHub, basically. I should mention also that the version I'm showing today is a sli is the experimental version available on GitHub, if you want. It's, uh, sl we have a different series of, and this is the version I was showing today that has uh, some node groups that are kind of working and other new features. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, for me, this thing is just wonderful. Yeah. And I, I think it was really missing in, in Blender. And uh, I'm teaching in the School of Architecture. And uh, they start to teach uh, another software. I will not give the name, but I think yeah. you know which one. And uh, um, is there, uh, how to say, a stable branch that we could use already to teach it? Uh, are we. I would say that uh, we, I try to keep it as stable as possible, but we are a couple of developers, and not everybody has a shared same idea about like stable and how everything should work. Um, and I think that partly it should be redone, and that will probably break some things. But I think you can use it. I mean, it, it's working in a lot of ways, and uh, we cannot develop it without people using it and trying new find new use cases. So somebody has to take a leap and give us feedback, and uh, we can improve it. But I, I would say, honestly, that it's not comparable to the other software.
but you can do amazing things. Yeah, but, uh, the other mm. software is not used completely uh, no. to the, its full potential, and no. I think here we have enough for teaching uh, what is parametric design. Yes. And this is what is very important for me. Yeah, thank you. One more, Madame Gauch. Everybody is happy. Good. We have a short break. Uh, thank you for your talk. <laughs> In 30 minutes, we are going to see Monica with her BioBlender project.